Hello, I'm Andrew Wang, and this is my 20 physics, physics 2212 lab 2 video. So, introduction. So, the purpose of the lab was to produce a computational model of two charge tapes exerting electric force on each other, and then using the model, calculate an estimation for the amount of charge needed for the tapes to levitate, and then compare the results um, for this lab with the first lab. And in this lab, we're using pretty much line charges instead of point charges. So before we move on to lab two, a quick recap of all the numbers from lab one and all the assumptions and the other uh, effects. So for the assumptions, the U-tape can be divided into multiple equally charged segments with each segment being considered a point charge. The air resistance can be ignored and the sum of all charge segments is equal to the total charge. And that the system was the tape and the surroundings was everything else in the universe. The tape length was 0.2 meters, the width was 0.02 meters, and the mass was 0.002 meters, and the charge was 2.26 E negative 8. Sorry, that was a typo. Uh, columns. And then the electric force magnitude, which would be the same as the gravitational one, is 0.0096 newtons. Some important concepts and formulas. Um, Newton's second law formula is use the electric field for point charge formula, the electric force for point charge formula is used and the gravitational force, which is set to the electric force formula. These are all the concepts used. And then the coding, um, all, all the variables were set beforehand and then pretty much for the code, um, you fill in the template. Um, here's the code for the electric field formula and the code uh, for, the, for the formulas for the line charge. And then in this, this is you're calculating the electric force using the line charge formulas and then here's the code visualized and all the magnitudes and the charges all calculated out and then a potential source of error is that the assumptions made from before were not realistic um and in lab one there was a lot of interference from like the hand and the table and stuff so the results may have been not have been too accurate and then the conclusion um so the these are like the what if questions so what if you had modeled each of your tapes as a single point charge like in the previous lab compare the estimated value of the charge you get when you use your experimental data to produce a point charge model to the value you got with your line charge model and then the tape charge using point charge model we got was uh, 2.26 e negative 8 columns and then the tape charge using line charge model was 2.92 e ne ne negative eight columns. So, you know, I would say overall, that's a pretty big difference. Um, uh, considering how small the numbers are, that's a pretty big difference. And then the calculations for, so the conclusion would be the calculations for the charge and forces are different because models being used were different. And then why do these estimates differ? which value is more likely to be closer to the real value and why uh, well the line charge calculation should be more accurate because there's more step there's a lot more steps in between and uh, overall the, the point charge is not a realistic for real life scenarios it's more uh, it's more idealistic and yeah that uh that concludes my physics 20 to 12 lab 2 report thank you very much